Uh, we'll talk briefly about the, uh, the Bottom Up Institute that was launched uh, almost a year and a half ago at the Indiana University in Krakow. Uh, very briefly about our college. This is one of the oldest and best, uh, best college university. And I'll cover thing that also might be quite controversial. Uh, but I can skip that part. It's the obligatory part. It's the obligatory propaganda we have to do when we are on tour in Poland. Uh, we provide education to more than 3,000 students and we employ more than 4,000 of, uh, 4, of uh, academics. Uh, the project called uh, Open, Open Boy, Open, Open Agro University, was launched in late uh, 2012. Uh, 2012. Uh, it's supported by Rector for Research, uh, Professor Maria on the piece, and we are working in a group of four, and uh, Conan and, and you are there. We also get support from the Digital Center, which is thank you to cover. And uh, the result of the project is a 50 page long report, which we submitted a month ago to our president, Don Rector, and we hope that it will be widely and publicly discussed. Uh, today, we'd like to give you a brief overview of, of the project outcomes. Uh, we divided it into four tasks. I will talk briefly about task one and two, while I come to discuss uh, task, uh, task four. So, task one was to consult the idea of open mandate or open access with, rep with representatives of faculties and PhD students. So, we have uh, approached all our deans and uh, members of uh, PhD student associations. We selected them carefully so we knew who is pro, who could be contra. And we, liked to, we wanted to find out what their approach, what their attitude towards open method and open, open science uh, um, idea. So what we, what, we, what we learned from those meetings, from those discussions, that there is a, uh, there is a rise of interest in uh, CC license systems Although not always there is a common understanding of what CC licenses are, what creative cons are, how it works in practice. There were also some fears which I will discuss on the next slide. Uh, there were also remarks that actually those uh, open licenses could be in favor of knowledge dissemination and verification. So if you decide to upload or if we make our employees or we just encourage them to upload and share the findings online, and there will be no room for poor quality research. Uh, there is there is also what we what we really what we, what we found that there is a quite a quite large number of individual but not coordinated initiatives at the university. So there's no one common policy why certain individuals or institutes or faculties they make some steps towards uh, towards open uh, open science or open open mandate. Uh, the, uh, there is also another issue which uh, came up and that has been already discussed here today that we have a large repository which is called the Agilean Digital Library and it's almost empty. So there is some infrastructure, there is money that is being currently spent and there is room that people, there is energy but there is no content. So this is, the, this, is like, this is quite surprising. So there is will, there is people, there is money but there is no, still nothing to, nothing to put online. All people are just doing it that by themselves by uploading papers or books on academia or, or someone somewhere else. Uh, so there's also a big need for integration of metadata with National System of Parametric Evaluation, which is launched by the Ministry of uh, Higher Education. So this is the case. If there is some data which is needed for evaluation, it could be, it should be easily, it should, it should be possible to easily extract from the from the system. So if we have it online, we should be able to just remove it and to extract it for other purposes. And so this is also uh, an interesting case because we spend some, we are spending some money on building systems, building infrastructure which is not compatible with other infrastructure also within the same country, which is quite, which is quite, uh, well, which sometimes is is, is frustrating. And of course. Uh, as I said, there is a number of individual <coughs> initiatives or initiatives taking place on the level of faculties or institutes, but there is no one common policy, and there is a there is a there is a growing need for that policy. And what doubts or fears we we found? Of course, uh, there is a great fear of plagiarism and infringement of copyrights. So, what if I 
I share my, 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 my findings online or I just make it public, what if someone said it for me, but it's, I think, quite common, so there is a still need for basic education, what open science is, so, uh, so, there's, a, so there's a clear view what, what, what we are fighting for. Uh, free writing on materials produced by the university, so what if we put online our syllabus, our teaching program, and what if there is another college or university which is using it? Uh, what I, as I said, uh, there is no compatibility with existing uh, evaluation systems. And of course, there is also a problem of money for those, uh, the individual, well, for those faculties or for the units of university, which actually are doing some job, but they got no support from, uh, from, uh, from the university as a, as a whole or from the, from the government. And of course, every story uh, has a villain. And in our case, the villain we discovered was the Yaga University Press, um, which, uh, which uh, turned out to be, uh, I think, the largest problem and also the largest hope in our case. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the University Press is specializing in humanities and social sciences. It's 100% publicly funded, so it's grants, internal grants, or public subsidies. Uh, the, they are all special in very limited and uh, mostly printed editions. So they usually print, uh, say, 200, 300 uh, of books. There's no circulation, no distribution, and, and there's no uh, online access. So you can publish a book and nobody knows about it. And, it actually, and even if uh, it's absolutely, it's completely, fun, it's completely publicly funded, there is no way to get it online. And there is a, <coughs> Well, it's a, it's a whole story, but believe me, uh, I think, uh, I think uh, things are getting better now. So high cost, no wider circulation, and the, uh, the, 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 the university press exists or works in a, in a way as independent company. So there's a huge structural program, pro pro problem which has, to be, which has to be solved on the level of, uh, of, of the rector. So uh, this case, uh, this case will be discussed. I hope uh, this month or next month um, at the university. And of course, we came up with few recommendations. So of course, we have to change to a non-profit business model. It's not a, it's not for profit. It's not business. If you get money from the state or the university, it's for all of us. And this has to this step has to be made, and it has to be made clear. You can't act as you would. Well, in, in case of the of the, of the investors, you can't act as if you run a company. It's not a company. Uh, there should be a limited acquisition of copyrights. At the moment, uh, the, uh, the, the university press acquires almost like all copyrights and keeps it. And the other thing is that we can provide open access to the already existing content. So, uh, the university press has a lot of, there's an amazing amount of material that they actually have. And they can, they can, they can, they, they can open access to it. But it's a matter of a single decision, and it could be a great capital for the university. Thank you. Um, okay, so I will a few, say a few words about the men that open men that we're trying to do at the university. It, it's quite difficult to express how to talk with the people about open men that's at the university because most of them have no idea how it looks like, how uh, what does it mean, and, and so on and so on. So we create uh, models of uh, open men that which could be used to. Uh, set a discussion and so to be honest you are have our first meeting to, uh, um, to the intellectual property committee in our university in this week in the last um, Friday and so those models, all of those models are built on f few elements first of all we identify a type of content uh, what means that we identify who provided content, is it an employee of the university, is it a student, is it a PhD student, is it something who is only associated with the university, and so on and so on, and also who finds, who gives the money for those particular content. Also, uh, the question was about the obligation of deposit, time of deposit, which is crucial, and also time of dissemination, uh, embargo period, terms of access, place of publication and or eventually waiver of exceptions. And um, so we created five models which are put in such kind of tables. And I will briefly skip from those models to give you a general impression that details are provided in those, um, on those um, tables. So we create five models 
that's uh, our uh, um, terminology, so you don't have to bother that. So we can start for the first one. So the maximum model, which is, you know, the best of the best, probably, but, uh, but very uh, impossible. Because, you know, we, we have to start the discussion which kind of those models we will go to implement at our university. So, first of all, um, in this model, the uh, obligation of deposit is to the all kind of content which we identify, and what is important for all models, uh, the deposition is uh, immediately. You know, so if you create a content, you have an obligation to put it in the repository, and after that you will talk about other you know, things, but have, you have to put your content into the repository. Of course, in the maximum model, we have a golden path and uh, everything which is the beautiful one. Uh, also, the model the Libra, so with uh, access on CC BY, no embargo period and narrow waiver exceptions. So, you know, nobody wants to do that. So, there is also an optimal plus model which gives us uh, also a compulsor for all types and also immediately. But uh, in this model, we give uh, for uh, you know, different we give reference uh, to golden or green path. You know, so we make uh, this content can be in a golden model. For example, that uh, model those uh, content which is provided by uh, University of Babylonia, which is founded by our university and, and which is published in our uh, publishing, we want to put in the golden uh, golden model. And term of access. Uh, which was um, liberal gratis and also a small embargo period. Optimal model which we want to, you know, to fight uh, is um, also compulsory for all types and immediately. Uh, this is only a green path. Uh, so as, 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 uh, uh, it is less and uh, model gratis, some embargo periods for six months, 12 months, and waiver exceptions for a few situations. The minimum model, which is uh, what we said when uh, Samuel felt that uh, we believe in our publishing, that in the minimum model we uh, put only uh, those kind of content which is funded directly by the university. So if the university put money on creating content, the minimum model will be applied. So, and this is, uh, could you, for a moment? Okay. Minimum. Okay, so here is a uh, green path uh, model grant is summer embargo period or no embargo period. It depends on the minimal model, minimal model minus, and some waiver exceptions. And as I told you, those things are put in a very detailed tables, and we can uh, discuss in each of situation with our authority next week. I think. Thank you.